This is Robert Cobra Barnes from SPM Radio. I'm very happy to have a real, really good friend and somebody that I've been working with for years and years and years. This is a guy who has been in the pool game for a very long time, and he was one of the first guys I wanted to go on and get on the show. We got this radio show with SPM. It's a podcast the radio show. It's going to be something unique. It's going to be a fan base program because basically uh, I'm a guy that is really a martial artist, but I fell in love with pool about six years ago and uh, I had stopped playing for about 24 years. And when I got back in, just like martial arts, I said, I'm going to need an instructor. I'm going to need somebody to guide me. And uh, other than Mr. Randy G in Dallas, Texas, the next guy that I had gotten a chance to get a hold of was a guy that I accidentally found. And I'm glad I got a chance to find him. And his name was Blackjack. I said, I got to find out what this guy's about. And uh, he's David Sapolis. I want to go on and invite him on. And I want to let you know uh, right now, this is a good friend of mine. This is somebody that when I'm down in the dumps or I'm about to throw a ball uh, through a wall or I'm about to throw a pool stick through a wall like a javelin, he's the guy that I call to get me back in, uh, you know, back in step. So how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing great, doing as, as good as I can uh, with the cards I've been dealt. So, well, I'm digging uh, you. We've been sitting back in COVID. I mean, COVID's got us all locked down, and I've heard a lot of people online sit back and say that it's one of the worst times ever as for pool is concerned. But, you know, for some of us that are kind of blessed to have a pool table, uh, it's been that one time to uh, go into – I don't want to say the word hibernation, but I'm just saying you're going into the cave. Uh, you're going back to the lab. I mean, there are things that we're doing now uh, as for practicing is concerned that we were always too lazy to go and do. So um, one thing no that I wanted to Yes. I mean, it is, it has been a good time for some of us. And I feel that my game has improved. I feel a lot of people's games have improved. But before we get started, what I wanted to do is get a chance to find out for everybody that doesn't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've, I've been playing pool since I'm about nine, ten years old. Um, okay. Started playing, uh, started playing a boys club. I come from a, a, a family here. where, you know, after school, you know, uh, there was no parent in the home because uh, my mom was working two, sometimes three jobs. Um, so I would go down to the local boys club in Kearney, New Jersey. Okay. And that's where I started playing pool and uh, just let people know the pool table I, I uh, started playing on didn't have any backs to the pocket. So if we oh. would, uh, shoot a ball in the corner pocket, the thing would go across and we have a designated guy that would chase the ball. Yes. You know, <laughs> the ball would fly off the table. Uh, humble beginnings, but, you know, that's where I got my start. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been a part of my life ever since. The first time I ever saw a pool table in real life was the Boys Club in South Waco at Memorial. Mr. Luis Gonzalez was the guy who ran it. I, uh, my mother uh, worked with his wife at the VA hospital, and uh, I had to go over his house early. And then I remember sitting outside while they cleaned up and opened the doors. And I remember doing a tour. And, and during that tour, I had a guy, I think I was maybe, goodness, I had to have been 10 years old. And I had this guy who was about 19 take us around the boys club. And we were, when we went around the corner, they went, here's our game room. And I heard the pool yeah. balls bouncing around. I got to see a pool table in real life. Believe it or not, yeah. the first time I think I can remember really seeing a pool table was on Sanford and Son, if you can remember whenever oh, Fred yeah. got a pool table in his house and he got hooked. Yeah. And I mean, I heard the balls hitting around and it reminds me of the little mini documentary about Earl Strickland when he said the first time I hit a ball, I was hooked. Exactly. So uh, it exactly. is. For uh, me, it was a way to stay off the streets. Yes. Um, you know, you, you talk about where, where you come from. Um, the guy that was there for me was, was a gentleman named Steve Dill. Mm. And uh, there's some people that will hear this that, um, actually play pool and are in my hometown uh, that know Steve Dill is the, the chief of the fire department there. Okay. And when I met him, you know, he was, he was a volunteer. He volunteered his time uh, for nine, 10 year old kid like myself. And yes. uh, he, we would work in the kitchen and make dinner for everybody that was there just like me. And, uh, and I would play pool. I got into wrestling there. 
I uh, got into martial arts while I was there. They had all um, of it. It was yes, something that kept me off the streets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It kept so me off the shout streets. out to the boys and, uh, and girls clubs. I think that, uh, you know, again, if, if somebody's looking for something to donate, I think that that's something that you need to pitch back a little bit of money because it really was a life changer for a lot of us that were very young and it kept us out of trouble. Got We got into a little bit of trouble too. Doors. I don't know about you, but it kept most oh, yeah. of us out of trouble. Oh, yeah. You know, one thing um, about it, I want to go in and ask this this when you first picked up the stick were you just a natural was it just hitting a lot of balls I mean when we first started it was uh any ball it wasn't no eight ball nine ball I mean it was just you're hitting any ball in whoever makes the last ball wins I mean were you a natural I didn't know how good I was okay I had excellent obviously excellent hand-eye coordination um to pocket balls Mm -hmm. and I didn't think anything of it I was just point and shoot Yes. Um, I didn't know what I was doing with cue ball. I didn't know anything about game strategy no, or no, no, no. any of the stuff that I teach <laughs> mm-hmm. today. Um, but boy, I could rifle shots into the back of the pocket and people were just, they were, they were enamored. And I, I didn't think it was a big deal. Um, you know, of course, as time went on, there was a lot more that I didn't know. I mean, just being able to find the back of the pocket, yes. that was just part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, like I said, you know, being at the boys club, that opened up doors for me. Um, that, you know, that, that I still, you know, I, I shake my head, uh, looking back at my story, um, and, and how I remained involved with the game, uh, from that age until right now. And, uh, well, one thing about know, it, you told, it me this, you told me, uh, years ago that when you took it to that next level was you had met a guy who ended up being a very, uh, important pool player, Mr. Cicero Murphy. Can you tell me a little yeah. bit about that? I, I had won a tournament um, at our boys club. And, and I guess it, it went in stages where if you won at your boys club, you got to go to this other tournament uh, that was a higher level in another town. And they took everybody there uh, playing ping pong and everything else. And, and the person that was there for pool, because they had like a ping pong champion. They had a guy that did tricks with the yo-yo. Yeah, okay, um, yeah. The guy that was there for <laughs> right pool um, was Cicero Murphy. Yes, I didn't sir. know who he was. Mm-hmm. I had absolutely no idea. But when I saw him hit a ball, um, I saw everything that I wanted to be as a pool player. And I didn't know that there was professional pool at the time. I just said, you know what? The way that this guy plays, that's the way I want to play. I want to yes. have my stick move like that. I want to mm-hmm. have that type of a look on my face you know, yes. as, as, as I'm shooting. And uh, I met him briefly. And then I went looking for him. I would skip school, like I said, you know, just because I was in a good situation didn't mean that I I would stay out of trouble. And uh, I must have skipped school about 17, 18 times before I finally found him. Okay. And uh, I I got kicked out of the pool hall and he he went outside and he says, what are you doing here? Uh, You look familiar, but then again, you don't look familiar. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gave me a ride back to New Jersey. Uh, okay. Dropped me off at my principal, uh, in Gar- all right, all right. In Garfield, New Jersey, Lincoln School Number Six. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, um, and basically told me, "Don't you ever do that again." Mm. And uh, it, it was the start of our relationship. And uh, he didn't teach me because I wanted to learn how to to shoot pool. Um, he would give his time to the police athletic league. He would give his oh. time to give back. Yes. Uh, to get kids off the street, not only in his neighborhood in Brooklyn, um, but also within the whole tri-state area up there. And that's how I became uh, a part of um, what I call the legacy of, of probably the greatest pool player of my lifetime, uh, Cicero Murphy. And, We're going to uh, get, I want to get back more into Mr. Murphy. And I want you to tell us, because not only are we going to, you know, talk about you and your journey, but it's an interesting story about who he is. And I didn't know anything about Mr. Murphy until you had mentioned him. Now, of course, I'm uh, on Facebook friends with his son and stuff like that. We're hoping to talk about the book coming out, but I want to get more into that. Now you took it from that level of learning from Mr. Murphy, not only learning about pool, but life lessons, um, mm-hmm. you had mentioned that he also was a boxer. So it's some life lessons yeah. that go along with that. Yeah. You got better and better and better. And before you know it, you're with the big boys. I mean, uh, how did how yeah. did that come about? Um, well, I, was, I learned how to play eight ball and straight pool. Those, those were the only two games I knew when I lived in New Jersey. And uh, my family moved to Florida. Um, 
I guess around 70, 1978. Okay. And when I got down there um, and, and tried to, to, to strike up someone to play straight pool, uh, nobody played straight pool down there. Everybody was mm -hmm. playing nine ball. Yes. And, uh, and banks and all kinds of other games that I didn't even, I didn't even know the rules to them. And uh, I was a straight pool player and, and I, I shot nine ball like a straight pool player. I was, I was taught not to go more than two or three rails. Oh, with yeah. a shot, don't hit anything too hard. And, um, you know, so nine ball didn't really come to me very easily. Okay. Uh, there were a lot of great players uh, down there in South Florida at the time. Mike Corella, uh, John DeToro, Tommy Brown, um, Danny DeLabrio was down there. Uh, Cicero would come down there in the winter months uh, as well. And, uh, but, you know, I, I had to learn the hard way and how to play nine ball. And uh, I was horrible at it at first. That was easy money, you know, and uh, I, I had to work, man. I had to work, you know, to, to let go of my cue ball, to break the balls hard, yeah. uh, to do all that stuff that I saw the, all the great players doing. And uh, it didn't happen overnight. It happened uh, very incrementally for me. Uh, so if there's any advice I can give younger players that are out there and they're struggling uh, to learn, um, you know, you're not alone. I mean, yeah, I've, I I, I, I've struggled even at the best of times when, uh, you know, people would look at me and say, wow, I wish I could shoot like you. And I'm like, man, if you only knew how many shots I miss when you're not looking, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's well, pretty, I mean, it you know, is it's, it's not, pretty eye opening. It it is not an easy game. I mean, what had happened to me, I'd been doing martial arts for years and years. I went to a lot of national championships and things like that. And I had turned about 45, uh, you know, six years ago. And I had said, I want to get into something that's going to calm my nerves. And I want to be around a lot of people that are not cocky like martial artists. So, wow, I made that move to become a pool player. You know, real, Wait, real that was, fooled, huh? <laughs> I think, yeah, I was fooled. But my point about pool is it's not an easy game. There was a thing oh, no. on Facebook. I talked about, uh, I talked to Garrett about this. Um, and he is the gentleman that is running uh, SPM. And he really had a, a good talk about this uh, subject that was on Facebook a while back and they had listed all of the hardest sports that there are and I think that they you know they had boxing way up there they had a bunch of way up, but yeah. pool was way down there way back in the That's bottom and I'm Merle going like that. I don't yeah. know Merle, about all Merle of that. was pretty pissed about that. <laughs> I'm a martial artist and I know that this game was harder than me learning karate or taekwondo uh, so yes, even, and this really gets to me because again, from a fan point of view, a person that's wanting to get good at the game, I'm looking at you and I've heard other pros say this, that y'all go through hard times too while playing this game. And that's Please. something that, um, your average seven and nine in the APA is not going to tell you because you, we look at them and think they're gods, you know, that, that nothing is ever hard for them. So you're a pro exactly. saying that sometimes you've come through some adversity. And, and everybody goes through adversity. And the only way I think you grow, uh, not only as a pool player, but in life is by going through adversity. adversity. Um, if things always went your way, life would be boring. Uh, life would, 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 would not be exciting. And you wouldn't learn all the things that you need for mm -hmm. when the hard uh, the hard times are going to come it's, it's unavoidable whether you're and then cool figuring player, out a way to father. push through them you know you have exactly. to figure out a way to push through them and that's going to be how you grow you know were you a gambler you're a hustler i mean i mean that in the 80s that's all they talked about when um you know i was in high school or whatever i mean it was pool was a hustling sport um you know there was no internet back when i came up Mm -hmm. there, were, there were very few books. Uh, the books that were out there, um, you know, probably written by ghost writers who mm. um, kind of pen books. I know Moscone had a ghost writer book out there. Mm. Um, there were no videos. There was no internet. There was no instructors. Uh, the only way that you learned back when I came up playing nine ball, straight pool, any game was to get in the box and play against the better players. Okay. And they weren't going to give you information. That was mm -hmm. the only way that you're going to learn. I, I tell people all the time, yeah, Cicero Murphy didn't really train me as much as he gave me good direction. Okay, okay. Um, I, he, he didn't sit there and try to adjust my arm and, and all that other stuff. But when I, when, when I made mistakes, be it um, 
I'd say strategically, or if I made a mistake socially in the pool hall, mm -hmm. it was pointed out to me. That's you know, I, I was taught what to do and what not to do. Yes, sir. And what you do with that is going to, that's going to make who you become as a player. And what you have today, today is completely different. It's a completely different animal. You know, mm -hmm. there's information that's there. Um, I could, I could pick up, pick up one of these, mm -hmm. and at the press of a button, I could have all the information. Some well, at the same good, time, some, yes, and at the, and at the same time, now I think it must be a lot harder to be a hustler because now, if you fool exactly. somebody out of a couple of thousand dollars, all they have to do is go snap, snap, and share it to everybody else. It, you know, exactly. um, so was I a hustler? I, I, I wouldn't consider myself a hustler. Um, when I was 17 years old, I, I, I was at a tournament and uh, didn't do well in the tournament, but, but I, I met Louis Roberts there. Okay. And um, at the time, you stand me and Louis right next to each other, and I could have passed by for, for Louis's uh, younger twin. Okay. And uh, everybody kept saying, is that your brother? Is that your brother? Because I was sitting there, and I was just listening to Louis's stories. And uh, about two weeks later, uh, I was on the road with Louis Roberts. It was the first road trip. Um, so I wasn't a hustler more than I was a, a student of the road. Mm, and okay, I learned a right. lot of things of what to do. And I learned a lot of what not to do in life uh, from that experience. And, uh, you know, so I wouldn't consider myself a hustler as, as much as I know that I was being bred uh, okay. to, to, to be a player. And, yes. and uh, players will know what I'm talking about because you know well, this guys is what I want to ask you, you they was have it, players was it a separate group of guys way back in the and I'm what I'm going to do I'm going to throw up the the years the 80s I mean if you if we can do that you know what I mean if you want to oh, go yeah. deeper than that or more you know or after that you let me know but I'm gonna say in the 80s the mid 80s uh when I was in high school was it a group of hustlers or gamblers, and then another group of guys that were tournament players? Um, I, I don't know, because, you know, at, you, you'd have events, uh, in between events, you know, you um, you would have matchups. Uh, people had territories back then. Mm. Um, you know, the first trip I went on, I could only speak for myself. Uh, we went up to uh, Louisiana. And uh, I met Scotty Townsend for the very first time. That guy and, I heard was uh, incredible. Oh, yeah. Louis and Louis immediately put me in a box, scared to make balls, man. This guy had alligator teeth around his neck and, and he was, <laughs> you know, opening up beer cans with his teeth and, mm -hmm. and doing all this stuff. And I was scared to make a ball. I thought he was going to kill me you know, <laughs> if I won a game. Um, but uh, I made a lifelong friend uh, in, in Scotty Townsend. And uh, just just an amazing person, amazing player, uh, and uh, you know there's uh, there, there's just you're just a special breed of player that that, that you have as road players. Uh, I've talked to C.J. Wiley about it, and and you know C.J. says you know that's um, those those are the guys that play against the players and play against the hustlers, and, and um, we're a special breed because we're road warriors. That's yes. that's how we describe ourselves. And, uh, you know, it's like I, I, I was talking in, in one of my videos, one of my metal game videos, um, you know, about how I walk into some town I'd never been to before, uh, go up to, to anybody in the room and play even or give up weight against somebody I'd never seen hit a ball before. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't care what their Fargo rate was. Didn't care who they'd beaten, who they played, because that's the way it was done back then. Yes, sir. Uh, with, with the advent of the internet and cell phones, uh, that's kind of died off. Um, I've walked into pool rooms where they know who I am before I, I, I rack the balls and, and, and break them on my table, you know. Um, and, and they come up to me and say, "Oh, I, you're 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 a player." Uh, and it's it's a completely different world now. Uh, back then, nobody uh, no nobody gave up a lot of information. You had pool detectives uh, mm. that <laughs> that would give up information. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. it's it's a different world today. It's yes. a completely different world compared to back then. Uh, so, and, and as far as as money players back then, uh, the the top guys that I uh, that, that I looked up to and the, the top guys that were out there winning uh, were guys like Dave Matlock, uh, okay. Keith McCready, mm -hmm. uh, guys like uh, Cheyenne Pete Trujillo, uh, you know, guys that uh, 
these, these, these guys would play on the small track. They, they play on the big track. Okay. And these guys were good. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Tommy Brown, John DeToro, great road team. Mike Siegel, Larry Hubbard, great road team. You're naming some good guys. Uh, You're naming some incredible people. C.J. Wiley, C.J. Wiley. I remember the first time I saw C.J. Wiley play pool, I was floored. I'd never seen it. And, you know, I, I was like, wow, look at this guy play. Uh, well, while mentioning I'm, CJ, if you don't mind, I mean, one thing that was, you know, again, I was probably just getting out of high school. I loved pool. I loved it so much. And I would, it was on TV. I mean, you can go to somebody young right now and it's like, you can't even really almost prove that that pool used to be on, on ESPN. Pool used yeah. to be on ABC Sports way back yeah. in when I was real, really before, you know, even before that, but when I was real young, uh, they would have pool on, because I was looking at some old commercials from the 70s and 80s, and they would show guys playing pool on ABC yeah. Sports, you know, the, the deal with, you know, the any of defeat, you know, and it's, and um, I remember reading an article, and it had said that pool was the number two uh, family spectator sport or whatever, right under bowling. So yeah, family participation huge. sport. Yes, yeah. it was huge. Now, going back to what I was saying about CJ, all of a sudden I started seeing these guys that were young because if you remember, you know, around that time, CJ and I think Johnny Archer, if you go back and look at those videos on AccuStats, they look like, you know, 16, 17 year old guys and they are yeah. in the top, you know, of competition. So, um, um, Again, what, what I'm leading to is who, when you had, you know, when you turned pro, when you got your, if you want to say, when you got your black belt, who were the guys that you were like, oh my gosh, I'm up here at the table with this guy? Buddy Hall. Oh, for real? Buddy yeah. Hall. Um, I, I, I was Buddy Hall's stalker for like five years. Oh my uh, goodness. Um, uh, every, everything that Buddy did on a pool table was absolutely perfect. Um, his cue ball control um, was so simple. Uh, the way he moved everything, the way um, he kind of lazily moved around the table, but that mind, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, I remember I, I would always I, I would look at him, and he had that wrinkle right there in between <laughs> his brow from looking at the balls, right. And I look in the mirror now, and I've got one of those yep, too, yep, you know, yep. <laughs> <laughs> because um, um, there was a guy, um, another one, David Howard. Oh my okay. gosh, man, the giant killer. Um, that, that's, a, that's another guy, big influence on my game. Uh, Ray Martin. Um, okay. I, I, I always tell people a story. Ray Martin called me on the phone a couple of times, and, and I pitched myself both times. I said, Ray Martin uh, called me on the phone uh, to talk to me. Um, and, and there's there's so many other other players that I looked up to. Mike Siegel was um, yes. probably you know today you know every everybody looks at Efren and says oh Efren's the greatest player. But when, when you talk to Efren and ask him who the greatest player was, uh, the the name that comes up with all the Filipino players who they tried to emulate, who they wanted to to shoot, to shoot like, and have the consistency and the form and and everything they did, they always bring up Mike the Mouth, Mike Siegel. Mike. And, they called uh, Mike I, was uh, that damn good and yes. better. So. When I got my first, uh, I think it was a VHS. If anybody can remember the VCR, uh, I bought a tape that had Mike Siegel, and I mean, I thought like, wow, this guy's. But they called him Captain Hook. Captain Hook. So I mean, you know, lately I've been hearing, you know, Mike the Mouth, but when I I knew him <laughs> as Captain Hook, and they had another guy, Pretty Boy Floyd. Now, this guy, um, Jimmy Mattia. he and I listened just last week for the first time. I got a chance to listen to him commentate a match that was on AccuStats, and he is incredible. I mean, he's, he's awesome. hilarious. I mean, and he doesn't, uh, I mean, and um, he son, is somewhere. If the rails I mean, were I mean, pockets, you'd have already won. <laughs> yes. I mean, where does he come up with this? Incredible. If, if the rails were pockets, you'd have already won. And that's too much. Uh, that's you know, too much. There's, the, the, on, the hustler there's an talk. online. Uh, there's a Facebook joke that you know we go back to his uh, pool hustling video where he played Pete mm -hmm. the painter, mm -hmm. and uh, you know all of us we refer to each other as Ed. And if you you read my Facebook, and that, that's a tribute uh, right back to Freddie Boy Floyd and, and that incredible, and, uh, incredible guy. He's he's, in, he's he's one of those people. Um, very underrated 
Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and there's, there's a lot of guys like that. Uh, yes, sir. You know, Grady Matthews is another guy. I looked oh, up to wow. It was, was Grady Matthews. Mm-hmm. Um, CJ Wiley, me and CJ are like the same age, but I, I always, I've always looked up to his game because I don't think there's a human alive, uh, that played better pool, uh, in the nineties, uh, than, than CJ Wiley. Like I said, Efren's name always comes up. CJ, mm-hmm. um, CJ was the man. You know, mm-hmm. and, and that's that's the people that I, I would look and I would aspire to be. And uh, uh, that's just on the player side, you know. Uh, hopefully we get to the instructor side. Tell you oh, some, yes. some of the guys yes. that have influenced my instructor. Okay. Um, oh, that's course. just on the player side. I, w- I would just marvel at Earl. Um, Earl Strickland. Yes, sir. Uh, has a high gear uh, that no human can touch. I mean, I saw him jump. A, I saw him jump a ball with a full stick back when we, before jump sticks That's were early. invented. I mean, um, say whatever you player, want. Man. I mean, the guy was incredible. I think pool was in uh, at a different. It was at a different level around when I was graduating to where these guys were real, real good. Another guy that we can mention is Nick right. Varner. Um, I think that to me, I don't know why people aren't mentioning him way more. I, I think he, he is incredible. He won, he, he won like almost every event one year. It was, it was, it was sick. And, um, and I tell people, I remember when Johnny Archer first came out on the, yes. on the pro tour, that guy would shoot at everything, you know, he never played mm-hmm. safe. And um, he kind of teamed up with Nick Varner one day. Okay. <laughs> God help the world. Okay. And uh, you know, there's, uh, there's somebody who took good direction from probably the best possible source that was available at, at the time. Yes, sir. And uh, you ever get Johnny Archer on here, kind of, or Nick, uh, mm-hmm. kind of grill them about that relationship. I sure I'd like will. To sit there I sure will. Um, well, look, you, you know, got but, into fourteen point one, so we can, you know, of course, everybody calls it straight pool. Um, if you go back, that's now when I remember I had watched this uh, these old vintage commercials from the 70s and 80s and it just happened to show a commercial about them playing on abc sports they were playing straight pool then uh wow. i don't you know a lot of young guys probably don't even know what that is now and i mean i don't want to offend anybody but i'm just saying it's like we're in a different uh time or a different generation of pool when i got into it it was about eight ball and not not necessarily mm-hmm. nine ball so uh, but way before i was playing i mean it was about straight pool so um wow. First, I'm going to just as if people don't even know what the game is, explain to us 14.1. 14.1 is a continuous rack game. Uh, you start out um, with 15 balls. Uh, you leave one ball on the table to break into the next rack. Okay. And it sounds easy enough. Okay. You, you can shoot any ball into any pocket. And uh, it will. This, this game will give you gray hair. Look at me. Mm-hmm. Uh, look at you. Uh, you know, <laughs> this game will yes. give you gray hairs. Um, gray hair, gray beard, it's, everything. It, it's the game I, I, I love. It's, for me, the best teacher uh, that the game has. Uh, if you have a weakness in the game of pool, straight pool will exploit that weakness at every level. Yes, sir. And, um, you know, it's it's you you can practice it by yourself you can play against an opponent uh there's so many intricacies eight ball is actually a derivative of the game of straight pool um you can play patterns in in eight ball much the same way you play patterns in in straight pool and uh patterns is just a logical path to get on your break ball yes clear the balls off the table uh Mm -hmm. to continue your your turn at the table and uh it's by far and away, that it's the champions game. It's the game that Moscone played, the game yes. that Irvin Crane played, yes. Joe Balsas, um, Jimmy Catrone, Grady Matthews, um, mm-hmm. you you name it. All um, of those talk old, to Johnny Archer. older pros, yes. Johnny Archer loves straight pool. Johnny I didn't Archer know plays that. straight didn't pool, know that. practice straight pool. Oh, he's a great straight pool player. I would he hear people say, oh, I would hear people go up and say, uh, what's your high run? I mean, that was like the yeah. question, what's your high run? And I, you know, I didn't really pay attention to it, but I noticed that all of those heroes that we talked about a while back, yeah. my, Mr. Mike Siegel, top uh, all of those guys, they were straight pool. Jimmy Renfrey, uh, did I say that yeah. right? I think, but he, Jimmy Renfrey, Renfrey. Um, yeah. um, he would all, I saw a lot of things that he had that had to do with straight pool. So a uh, very underestimated yeah. game as for something that can help you with all your pattern play. 
it, it, it will, it, it will take you into in what I call the, you know, I call it the deep water, you know, uh, it's, you look at a player like Alan Hopkins and Alan Hopkins is a great straight pool player. He's, he's great at all games. Um, you have, you, you have guys like, uh, uh, my favorite pool player of, of all time is Jeff Carter. Jeff Carter's just a great straight pool player yes. um, out of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark, Will Mark Wilson also has a foundation in straight pool. And these, these are all guys that came from, from uh, Sailor. And, you know, these guys um, that, that are out there today playing on the equipment, and equipment's a lot tougher today than it, than it was back then. And uh, you, I watched Dennis Arcoyo, you know, at the Straight Pool Challenge at Derby City, uh, you know, fighting for his, you know, for, to get that high number yes. every year. And guys like Darren Appleton and uh, John Schmidt and, and all these great players that have, mm -hmm. have bled life back in. Charlie Williams, uh, uh, Charlie Williams uh, has done a lot for Straight Pool, has our Straight Pool Hall of Fame yes. at the World Tournament of 14-1 politics aside it keeps anything that keeps our game alive yes and, and uh us straight pool players love it you know and my, my hat's off to anybody that does that uh, well Mark a Griffin, great shout out to john yeah. for uh mr smith for doing uh something that a lot of us uh waited for him to complete and he broke that record that record stood for a very long time uh, no matter what is said he did it um I think that there should be a lot well of deserved. recognition for it, you know, and I hope that well deserved not, and well, he, not just he, pat him on the he's back. He's the but, perfect player. Yeah, he, <laughs> you know, he did it. He said he was going to do it, and I'm I'm very glad, you know, to have seen something like that done, um, you know. And like I said, the, the the thing about it, from what I'm hearing, you got into the uh, pros, started getting out there with them, hitting balls, doing what you had to do, going through the circuit. And then I had to practice twice as hard you, to be half as good. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, well, at what point did you decide, Hey, look, you know, this is it for me. It's time for me to, to uh, do some leadership and to bring other people up and go through the, um, you know, the learning that you went through. Um, I was out there and I, I was spending more than I was making and, and okay. I was doing okay. Um, I mean, I was, I wasn't out there knocking down F and Reyes or, or Earl, or, or any of those champions, but I, I was doing okay. Um, but I was still in the red and I had a family, had, had kids, had a house. Um, and then I, I recently bought a pool hall okay. and uh, what better way to, um, to give back to the game than to take all these notes. Okay. All these notes. And I've, I've got notebooks on, you can't see it right now, but I got notebooks on this whole wall. Okay. Uh, just filled with stuff that I would, I, I've got, 25, 30 years of, of notebooks and, and guys Incredible. who follow me on Facebook, um, see my random thoughts. Uh, they all come out of these notebooks. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I look at them. I try to read through my trick chicken scratch from 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would take notes. If I lost a match, I would write about it. And, and writing was very therapeutic for me. Yes. Um, I was a very angry pool player, a very, very angry pool player at one point. And um, that's how I got into the mental game. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to uh, just kind of, kind of find an easier way for me to think. I had all the skill in the world, you know, but skill, skill alone is, is not going to get you uh, to the top of the mountain. So much. It's uh, so much. To there's it. so much up here. There's so many intricacies uh, to your thinking, to your training. Uh, training for me is, uh, is basically transforming weaknesses into a strength. Yes, and sir. understanding where your weaknesses are and, and the way you're going to remedy those, those weaknesses. Uh, you know, there's, there's been times uh, where I would get on the table and I'd, I'd waste 12 hours at the table because all I want to do is just shoot balls. Yes. Or I wanted to gamble or I wanted to do this and, and mm -hmm. wanted to do that. And what, what mental training did for me is it focused me. It gave yes. me a, a goal-oriented perspective, okay, in which to move. So as a player, yeah, I could probably go out there and do well, okay? Uh, knowing what my limitations was as a player had a big, big impact on why I became an instructor at the time. Yes. And what I started doing is I started writing, uh, taking my writings and writing articles. 
yes, sir. And, and putting it in the, the written form mm -hmm. and sending it off to, to different uh, local uh, or regional mm -hmm. uh, billiard publications. Yes. This is before the internet and yes. at the beginning of the internet. And uh, that's how I got started with that. And um, I just found it something to do uh, to remain with the game, not as an active player. And this was about 25 years ago. Okay. And uh, from then until now, uh, I've been able to, to maintain some sort of relevancy with the yeah. game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, by writing about it and staying, you know, staying on top of, you know, all the changes that have occurred in our game. Uh, not only at the, the level of our game, but also in the level of media, uh, the level of the internet, you know, the, the advent of the internet, there's so much information out there. Uh, as a young pool player, you have to be able to discern uh, whether or not it's good information, useful information, or stuff that's not applicable to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's also stuff that's out there, okay, that's designed to waste your time yeah. and yeah. have you go around in circles. And uh, the people that I train, the people that I work with, uh, the number one thing that, that I'm trying to do is to get them to focus on transforming weaknesses into strengths so they can take that onto the table and be confident. Well, I don't care how well it. you shoot. Well, one thing about if it. If you're not confident, you're not going to win. No, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. One thing that um, I feel is just like being a martial instructor. I mean, what? I learned coming up was that they're going to teach you 27 offensive things that you need to know. They're going to teach you about 27 or 30 defensive things you need to know. Then they're going to pitch you out in the ring against somebody that's double your size and say, okay, get out there and fight and survive. Yeah. Pool and everything, is sort everything of the you were same taught. Way. Once you get hit in the face, everything you were taught goes out You're the gonna window. You're going to just forget <laughs> all of that. So what I'm saying, pool is almost the same. I mean, you know, um, yeah. You can learn to knock some balls in, Murphy but you need somebody. taught me everything in boxing terms. Okay. Okay. He taught me everything in boxing terms. All right. He could teach. He told me I could teach you how to throw a hook. I could throw you how to teach you teach you how to throw an uppercut, an mm -hmm. overhand right. Okay, one at a time. A body punch. You know, body hook. Okay, a jab. Okay. Then I could teach you how to put it all together. Mm. All right. But if I don't teach you how to move your feet and to get out of the way, That's okay, exactly you're get knocked out. Work. Okay, exactly. Yeah, uh, everything that he taught me. If you if you read any of my books, there's it's all boxing terms, mm. you know, pick and jab, and mm. and all this stuff that go. I talk yes. about about going to the balls and straight pool and, and, and things like that. I only know it in boxing terms. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a correlation to that because if you don't know how to put it, or put those punches together, you're not going to have combination. Can you do me a favor and go on and take a little bit of time to go on and talk about Cicero Murphy? I mean, I was amazed at the story that you told me uh, about him because I had never heard of him before. Mm -hmm. And this, again, was during those times of straight pool and uh, world championships and things like that. Can you tell us a little bit yeah. more about him? Cicero Murphy was a great, great straight pool player. And he played some of the best pool of his life before he was allowed to play in what was our world championship at the time. And uh, one year, uh, the players picketed outside, okay, wanting him to be in the tournament. And uh, Cowboy Jimmy Moore was one of them. It's another one of my mentors, it's Cowboy Jimmy Moore. Um, the next year, Cicero was allowed to play in the event, okay, and won it on his first attempt. <laughs> wow. Won it on his first attempt. Um, there were several years prior to that where he was probably the best player in the world, but had no platform to go out there and prove it. And mm -hmm. he went out there and not only, not only played well, but he proved he was what he already knew. He was the best. That's incredible. He was the best. And he had the respect of all of the pool players. Some of the promoters played games. Uh, I don't want to go too much into that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's, it's a, a testament. Uh, you and I, uh, we've known each other for years. We're friends. Um, we've had some conversations and I bring up the Josh Gibsons. Okay. In baseball. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I bring up the Sam Langfords in boxing and, and, and I bring them up for a reason because you know what? Um, they didn't, they and the people that were around them and the people that supported these athletes didn't write history. 
okay? Mm -hmm. And these players, uh, you know, there's people out there um, that don't know who they are. When I, when I brought those names up to you, I bet you I had to go look them no, up. I didn't right? know. I had to go um, look them up. And there's, there's an entire world out there. Um, I, I usually have some books here. Um, I've, I've become an expert in the past couple of years on, on the, the Negro League baseball. Um, one of, one of my, my passions is baseball. Uh, it's one of the only passions my dad and I ever shared was our passion okay. for All baseball. Right. Uh, and I, I got into the, the Negro Leagues because I, I learned about Josh Gibson and, and, okay. and a lot of the other players that we've, we've you know, we, we've never even meant, meant to be heard from mm -hmm. in history because these, rec these records were covered up, they were buried, they were pushed aside and, and pushed over here, and mm -hmm. they were great athletes. Now, Jackie Robinson got all of, all of the accolades for uh, being the first, uh, first man of color to put on a major league uniform for a major mm -hmm. league team. Mm -hmm. um, there are, for, for every Jackie Robinson, there's thousands of guys yes. that were left in obscurity, not by their choice, but because of the way the world was. And Cicero Murphy changed that uh, for the world of pool. Um, I remember when Cicero passed, I, I wrote a piece, and it's probably still on the internet, um, about Cicero Murphy. And, and, and the reason I wrote that is I didn't want anybody to never, I didn't want an asterisk next to Cicero Murphy's name. Mm. Uh, Cicero Murphy um, didn't want to be referred to as the first black pool champion. He wanted to be referred to as a champion. Mm -hmm. Just like we refer to Earl or Mike Siegel or Willie Moscone, they're champions. Look at them. Mm -hmm. But when we bring Cicero Murphy's name into it, we have to address the color of his skin. And that's what he was trying to, to say when he said, hey, you know, I'm a pool player. Colors are for crayons. Mm. Okay? okay? I'm a pool player. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we look at that today and, and, and we still have the same thing. When I, when I bring up guys like, like uh, Glenn Piggyback, uh, Piggyback, Glenn Rogers, mm -hmm. we bring up Strawberry Brooks, we bring mm -hmm. up uh, Black Rags, uh, any black pool player, Bugs Rucker, anybody, okay? Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's people out there who don't even know that these champions exist. Uh, I think I didn't even Chicken know Bay. about Bugs Ruck. Uh, I didn't know about Bugs uh, until uh, Bugs Grady Rucker, Matthews. Great, great I think Grady Matthews had did a. Um, it was a get together for Bugs, and this was right before he mm. passed. And uh, Freddie the Beard talked about him a lot Freddie in the, the book and said that he was. I like was introduced an to to thankful player to Piggy Banks pocket. Rogers. I was I was introduced through to him through Freddie Benavigna and. Okay. Um, you know, there's so many uh, great players that were out there. I brought up um, Edgar White, Shake and Bake. I, I bring up, um, you know, Cicero Murphy, James mm. Evans. Mm. Okay, um, was was he? He would enter tournaments. Okay, uh, and and he's probably the greatest pool player that Cicero Murphy ever saw. And I, I refer to Cicero Murphy as one of the greatest pool players. And that's how he refers. refers. Um, a, a guy was talking about on my Facebook page uh, yesterday, okay? Uh, Monster John, John Rouse, a very mm. good friend of mine from South Florida. Um, just just an incredible, incredible guy, incredible player. Um, and, uh, you know, I, people say, oh, I never heard of him, never heard of him. And, and there's mm. so many guys that are out there um, mm -hmm. that are, are such good players, uh, people that, um, that you're never going to hear of uh, if, if we don't keep that alive. And, and that's been one of my passions uh, since Cicero was alive, mm -hmm. you know, was to, to make sure. Because yeah, he's uh, if, if we don't write history correctly, then people aren't going to know mm -hmm. uh, about these, one that thing these great players who are out there. Well, one, yeah. one other thing I wanted to do is this. I wanted to say that, again, when I was getting out of high school, there were guys like uh, C.J. Wiley. There was Johnny Archer. You still see Earl Strickland getting up there, and he was starting to really come up. And I've heard you mention his name a couple of times, but we got to mention Efren Reyes. I mean, was you've <laughs> mentioned to me other uh, Filipino players. Was Efren the one that made it huge in the Philippines, or was it – 
Jose Perica or was it somebody else? I mean, there are so many guys that you can name. Uh, I got a chance to see uh, Frank uh, Bustamante. Uh, I've got to see these guys at least in person, and which was just incredible pool players. I mean, just unreal. And, um, you know, tell me about how the movement went that way. Um, Jose Perica is probably uh, the first Filipino pool player that, that I saw um, was Jose Perica. Um, Efren came over, I think it was about 84, 85, and won the Reds tournament and would play anybody there. And I'm pretty sure that uh, Freddie uh, and Grady had, had, had uh, brought Efren in. And uh, here's this guy shooting with this, this pump, this pump handle stroke. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, you know, th th who is this guy? He's not going to mm -hmm. win. He might win a couple of matches. He's, and he ends up beating Buddy Hall and, and anybody else that decided to, to, to play against him. And nobody had ever beat Buddy Hall, you know, mm -hmm. nobody, nobody had. And, um, you know, Efren was just a magical guy. And what, what separates, I think, Efren, uh, he's got one world championship. He's got one, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's revered um, mostly um, because of his, his, the way he conducted himself. Yes. Um, this is a true gentleman. This is a guy who, um, who got the most um, out, of, out of his ability. Yes. Uh, that comes from humble beginnings and never lost that humility. Never yes. lost that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's just such a great role model. I, 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 I bow to Efren. Okay. Uh, he's, of course. He's, 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 he's just one of those, he's just one of those special guys, but there's so many other uh, great Filipino players, uh, players that came out of, came out around that same era. Uh, you've got Rodolfo Luat, okay. uh, the late uh, Leonardo Andam, great mm -hmm. guy, great player, uh, just fierce competitor. Um, you had um, Edgar Acaba, uh, who, when I saw Edgar Acaba shoot, I, I was just like floored. Uh, mm -hmm. Met him in Germany. Uh, small story. I was in the military, and when I went over to, I got stationed in Germany, and somebody told me, "Yeah, as soon as you get off the plane, man, those guys over there, they just, they, they, they don't play the same way. Your game's going to drop two balls by the time you get back." And I get over there, and there's guys like Oliver Ortman and Norbert Lang and uh, Ralph Suquet. Uh, he was young. He actually had hair at that point. Okay. And then you had a very young Filipino <laughs> player over there named Francisco Bustamante. Mm. And uh, probably the greatest break I ever saw uh, on a pool table came, came off the, the tip of Francisco Bustamante. Mm. Um, and, and look at the effect that that has had on our, our, our pool world. You know, I mean, I think that everybody's better because of them. I think everybody's better because of them. I mean, um, great, you know, great there's certain coming out of people. Europe, you got great players coming out of the Asia. Well, you know? and, and, and that's um, what I'm saying. I mean, I was going to go on and say how is pool, you know, now, I mean, um, you know, and again, I'm going to always, I'm a martial artist. I'm a, I teach martial arts, so I'm going to constantly bring up martial arts as a reference. But around the 90s, there were about four or five guys. I mean, there were guys like Clay Barber. Um, there were um, the Penarock brothers, um, uh, Master mm -hmm. Dong Lee, uh, all in the Dallas area. There was um, guys in California. There was the Pooh brothers, uh, Pooh, the family of Poohs that were in Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, Jay Warwick and all the guys that were there. Well, what I'm saying, I'm naming about a little less than 10 people that changed the game of Taekwondo. I'm talking about 92, 93, 94. Nobody fought like them. And now everybody oh, yeah. fights good because we all want to emulate those guys. So what I'm saying, um, who are the guys that basically everybody tried to be like that, aren't they, that changed pool into a way better level? Um. Keith McCready, my gosh, man. Okay. See him in the color of money. Uh, uh, and that guy, man, he's, in, in my opinion, stole the show. I mean, that, any, any tournament that, that he went to, uh, there's, you just see crowds of people uh, flock just to see, you know, Keith McCready, Earthquake. Um, and, you know, in my opinion, one of the probably the best money player uh, in the world, you know, uh, in any era. You know, mm. and, and he's a phenomenally talented guy, phenomenally talented. And he influenced so many players. Earl, Earl's another guy mm. uh, that players have emulated. People yes. get out there, yes. the big break and, and that, that go, 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 go. Um, and then, you know, you, you, you got to look at some of the European players. And, and, and my hat's off to Oliver Ortman, changed the game of straight pool. 
Hmm. Um, Oliver Ortman splattering the balls all over the table. And then you know, we've never up. seen that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we played pick and jab, knock a few out. You know, because mm -hmm. you don't want to spread all the balls out. But I mean, when you play like a guy that, that his nickname was the Machine. Yes. You know, you play like him. I mean, he changed the game of straight pool. Um, and, and you look at the influence on, uh, that that's had over in Europe of guys. And I'll throw another name out there okay. that some some players won't even know over in Europe that they know him. But people over here uh, probably had never heard of Tom Storm, a guy yeah. out of Sweden, um, okay. was a phenomenally uh, outstanding nine ball player uh, back in the 80s and uh, is probably trained more champions, wow. uh, guys that are over there, uh, over there in Europe uh, that um, it, it, it's, it's, like, it's like a tree and, and, and a tree just kind of grows branches. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, for a while there, some of the best players in the world were coming out of Poland. And wow, people, okay. really people are coming out of Poland, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and uh, because they have so many great players and yes. the discipline. And you're seeing the same thing in mixed martial arts right now. Some of the greatest fighters are coming out of uh, places like Poland and New Zealand. Look at New Zealand right now with, with Adesanya and, uh, you know, uh, Dan Hooker and uh, uh, Volkanovski. These, yes, these, these guys are animals. And people are saying, New Zealand? Yeah. And they, they have tough guys in New Zealand. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's the same thing with pool uh, for a while, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of goes in waves. Um, and you, I mean, look at the, the British players that, that we have today um, that are out there playing the game. Great, great players like Daz and, um, you know, uh, shout out to my man, Pat Holtz. And All right. uh, All right. you know, All right. it's, it's so many, so many great players that have come out of the UK um, that, was primarily snooker and uh well i wanted to it, ask you a, a question about that now. you know you had mentioned discipline you just now you know said snooker um do you think guys in europe uh and all the surrounding all the areas over there that uh do you think that the snooker background gives them a better base to start with i mean usually around here we just pick up a stick and start hitting balls i mean when you're on a six by 12 table or whatever i mean and 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 the, the pockets are you know about like that big i mean is it you know that they have to take some type of formal training how to hold the stick how to you know stroke out a grip you know do you think that gives them an one edge or something answer. like that I, I can give you one name and if you want to go look and, and see um the effect that having good foundation to your game and the fundamentals and how that how that snooker fundamental um, I'll give you two names to go out and watch on YouTube or buy the videos from AccuStats.com okay and the, the two players that come to mind Karen Core and Allison Fisher Allison Fisher I knew you were going to say that I knew you were going to say that Karen Core and Allison Fisher mm -hmm. um, if I could look at the billiards part of it and look at billiards players Efren Reyes was cha was was a champion billiards player as well incredible. Okay, he can, he can play pool with no pockets. Same with Ga mm -hmm. Young Kim. Mm -hmm. Ga Young Kim has, has a firm foundation. Her kick, kicking game is so strong. You and I talk about kicking all the time because I Jimmy love, Reed, I love it. Uh, mm -hmm. who in my opinion, the love greatest it. instructor mm -hmm. of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and we talk kicking all the time. Well, Ga Young Kim's kicking game is so strong because of her understanding of the billiard systems. Her and, break uh, is incredible, too. Her break. She, she breaks is, harder than, than some wow. men. And you know, the wow. same could be said of another player, Jennifer Chan. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she weighs maybe 95 pounds, mm -hmm. soaking wet with rocks in her pockets, and she breaks the ball as, as hard as Wade Crane, and, or maybe harder, and accurately, and gets yes, a great sir. result. Keeps the cue ball, keeps a rock on the table, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, you see, you, you you see all the changes in technology, and we have all this new stuff coming out. Break cues didn't didn't exist back in the day. You grab yeah, something off the wall, you might have something. Yep. Uh, exactly. I mean, when when I um, when I was you know what happened is this I started playing pool when I was ten when I was about twenty four somewhere around there I stopped playing I really got heavily into martial arts I stopped playing for like twenty twenty two twenty three years then I got back in whenever I was about forty four forty five and when I was getting out of it I mean it well really when let's say after I graduated. Uh, around 90, 91, 92, somewhere around there after I graduated, uh, I don't remember 
everybody having their own sticks. And I don't remember Lodi flexing shafts. <laughs> I remember you grabbed this off the wall and you started hitting balls, you know? And now the technology of, of all of the stuff that's out there right now is ridiculous. I come back, I get an APA, no. everybody's like, well, you gotta go buy a stick. Well, why don't I have to go buy a stick? Well, this is why you're going to need a loaded flexion shaft. You're going to need this type of tip. Um, you come to me and I tell you, hey, you know what? Twice a week, just shoot off the wall. It'll help, help your game more yeah, than anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and at the same time, I mean, and, and uh, I hope I'm not getting this wrong, and I know CJ will correct me, but um, – I would talk to him about low deflection shafts and it was a time that I know he looked at me like, why, you know, um, it, it's amazing the knowledge that he has. And when he had said, oh, that's about deflection, he said, you know what, sometimes we need to just embrace the deflection. And I mean, I, we can get on and talk about CJ for a long time. I plan on having him on here soon. Uh, but you one should. thing I do and want there's to no human to, being. Oh yes. There's no guys, human being he's a who monster. knows more about the game of pool than CJ Wiley. He's you, a monster. You hear that from me. He's, and uh, but what I want to do before we get ready to go, I want to ask you this: the young players coming up. I mean, um, there is a new, young, aggressive group of people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Wiley. Yeah, I got one autographed over here. <laughs> um, uh, but there's a young, new, aggressive amount of uh, players that are coming out, and these guys are—they're uh, fearless. I mean. Oh, yeah. um, what is going on? I mean, is, do you think this is from just the instruction that's out there? You know, a long time ago, you'd hear all these great players and it just, the, the, the Kentucky would keep coming up. Kentucky, Kentucky, Kentucky. Well, now it's just a gigantic amount of young players. And I'm not just saying fearless. These guys are, uh, you know, they, they go for blood. I mean, I've, I watched uh, uh, Thorpe in Bank Pool. I mean, this guy is incredible. Of course, Shane, We for years we've seen Shane just go off and do all kinds of things. Uh, I love watching him play and I'm encouraged. But one of the things that got me into really wanting to get good at this game was Moscone Cup. It was uh, years ago, and I saw uh, Scott Woodward and uh, Justin Bergman. And mm -hmm. those two players, I mean, just – watching sky and i was really uh honored to get a chance to get a pick with him and uh at skinny bobs at the texas open a long time ago seemed like a real cool guy in person too and um those young players encouraged me to want to get good at the game what is going on with these young guys that are coming out of nowhere and they're going they're just taking over it's it's a lot of things it's it's having access to watch good pool. Um, years ago, um, if if there was a pool tournament in May, uh, it would come out in Billiards Digest. You get all the results in July. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now uh, you could watch the tournaments live uh, via the internet. Uh, you can order matches on AccuStats.com. You can uh, get on the internet and find uh, a lot of stuff uh, that's been posted on YouTube. Uh, of, of matches that go as far back as the as, as the '60s, I've mm. seen stuff from from way back then, and there's so much knowledge out there, and you can watch and you can learn, mm -hmm. and, and that's what you're seeing. Plus, um, you know, t t today, um, I don't know. I don't know if I was to, if I was to, to be born, say in in 2000, and I was to come up and, and learn pool again, I'd probably be too distracted with the internet and one of these and yeah. And, yeah. and everything yeah. else. Uh, uh, you know, back in the day, you know, none of that existed, um, and I lived I lived to, to get to the table. Yes, uh, and, and that was my passion. And uh, most of the better players that you're going to see today are players that have that same passion. Yes, sir. And uh, you bring up Justin Bergman. I mean, the first time I saw him was uh, probably 2005 at a UPA tour event. And uh, I was watching one of his matches uh, with Tony Robles. And we were just just floored at the fearlessness uh, mm -hmm. that, that he possessed. And, you know, it's been, what, 15 years. I mean, he's, he's gosh, in his 30s now. But, mm -hmm. okay, I don't think we can call him a kid anymore. Um, but he's just as good, probably even better. He's got international experience, Moscone yes. Cup experience, and mm -hmm. oh, one of my favorite guys to watch. 
Um, you know, and then you, you've, you've got so many great players out there that players can watch and emulate. Guys yes. like Aaron Appleton, mm -hmm. uh, guys, guys like Niels Bayan, mm -hmm. uh, Ralph Suquet, Torsten Holman. And, and these guys, they're, they're disciplined. If you look at Torsten Holman, Torsten looks like an athlete. Yeah, trains like it. He looked, yeah, uh huh. And uh -huh. He's just phenomenally funny guy when you get to know him. Uh, he's just a really funny guy. And uh, just so many great players out there today. And, For the few people uh, that don't know about the Moscone Cup, why don't you tell me uh, your experience watching it or possibly being a part of it or whatever? I mean, you know, uh, it's, there was a time that America was really far ahead. Then we started to kind of drop a whole bunch of them. And it's an incredible uh, players, awesome. incredible European it's players awesome. that are that are that love the game, and then we've been getting the last couple. So I think, tell me and about and the I think that's Cup. because of Jeremy. I think it's because of Jeremy. <laughs> it's because of Double J. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. uh, there, there's so there, there's there's so many factors. But now to they that. just you know they just made he's the he's the captain now. The I mean guy. he's going to be the captain. He's so the I'm guy. looking forward to this year. Uh, um, he is he. I got to meet him a lot of times. Got to do some lessons with him. I love him. I mean he's a super sweet guy. Um, um, I wanted to get him to let me put on his Moscone shirt, but then it would fit on me like a gown because <laughs> he's so much bigger than me. But the thing about it, he is, um, and I don't know if anybody's going to argue with me about that. I think he's one of the most, he's the Tony Romo of pool commentating. The guy can oh, tell you what's going to happen before it happens. You know, what do you oh, yeah. think? I think he's, I think, I think he's, he's one of the best out there. I think he, him, Bo, Bo Runnigan, Ra, I think some of these guys are taking commentating to a whole other level. Uh, uh, of course, I want to give a shout out to uh, Big Truck. Corey, Corey Duell's another one. I can listen to Corey's commentary all yeah. day long. For real. And, Even and, his one pocket commentary. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Scott so back Foss. To, so, Scott so Foss, Moscone, another one. So Moscone Cup, can you explain to them what that is uh, for anybody that might not know what the Moscone Cup is, how we did a long format. time ago. It's much like Davis Cup. It's kind of like Davis Cup in tennis, you know, mm -hmm. it's team format. Um, you earn points to make the team and uh, you get on the team and um, you either excel, hmm. do well, or crack under the pressure. I've seen it is great pressure. players it is uh, pressure. put in some bad situations. It is um, pressure. And it's all about the spectacle. It's about the spectacle. It's about the game. It's about watching guys persevere. Um, I mean, look at Tyler Steyer. Uh, I love Tyler this guy. Steyer I love that guy. In the, I love he, that guy. He's in the star of the show mm -hmm. and uh, just goes out there. Uh, just such a great player. Uh, Darren Appleton, another mm -hmm. guy for, for team. And most of the guys for a while there, most of the guys on Team Europe were living over here. You know, Mika Eminen. <laughs> well, at the same Darren time. Appleton, we try, well, but at the Orson. same time. But you got to understand at the same time, even in the Olympics, I mean, a Jason. lot of the people that ran for other countries, <laughs> they came to here to Texas to for their 100-meter training. So, I mean, that stuff happens. And, and yeah. It's one of those things that, yes, being American, I'm, I'm going to always uh, be for America to win. But there are some incredibly great European players that I really like whenever yeah. they're out there. I mean, yeah. Mr. Appleton, these are likable people. Now, I know that there's been some tension and some craziness in the last couple of years because everybody's getting – because good. the crowd gets so into it. That's but, good. But nobody at the Moscone Cup is a hateable figure. These are people that I believe in my heart is something to look forward to every year. Oh, it's, it's, it's the Super Bowl of pool. I believe you know? I, it, I it, is, so. it is what it is. And uh, thank God for matchroom sports. Mm -hmm. uh, and Barry Hearn and, and taking over not only uh, Moscone Cup and, and providing that not only for the players and the fans and the world, but now they got the U.S. Open. And uh, don't think we're going to have one this year, uh, but it's in good hands. And uh, that's what we need. Um, well, good luck know. to Mr. Uh, Jeremy Jones as for coaching. Uh, I think he's got, you know, some some great things that he's going to bring into the game. Um, he's in the he's in the Hall of Fame. I think it didn't. They just put him in the uh, one pocket Hall of Fame or something like that. I think they you I'm know did sure. that. Uh, he deserves <laughs> it. I mean, a lot of these guys, you know. Um, 
let me ask you a couple of more questions before we go. And first, I want to thank you sure. so much for this, you know, being able sure, to no chat with you. Um, the thing about it, the we talked about the older players and everything that they're, mm -hmm. they did for the game. We're talking about these great young players that are coming up. And we talk about equipment changing the game. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go yeah. on and talk about a couple of things that's uh, – Gonna get some curse words thrown our way, probably. It just case people don't agree. <laughs> Number one, what equipment is it that if you could get rid of it, you would go back to the way it used to be? And let's just be honest. I mean, I'm just gonna, you know, cause, uh, for, I mean, just for me, um, I, I get rid of all the magic racks first. I mm, get rid of all. I that didn't stuff. think that would be what you. I thought you might no, say the jump yeah. jump cue. I thought you'd say jump uh, cue. Maybe. No, I look at jump cues kind of, kind of kind of the same way I look at owning a nine millimeter. You know, okay. I own one. Okay, mm -hmm. I've got a conceal and carry, and I hope that I never have to use it because because yeah. I, I I don't want to have to use it. I don't want to be in that that situation. Um, but the thing about jump cues, okay, is if I don't have one, okay, if I show up at a tournament, and I don't have one in my case. Um, I'm a sit and duck and guys mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nowadays, I remember when jump cues first come out, you needed about three to five inches of clearance to get over a ball. And I've seen, I've seen some guys, one guy from Vietnam, there's a video out there. He's like a half an inch away from the, from the object ball. He jumps mm -hmm. the cue ball. Um, when you got guys that could do that, why not have one of those in, in your case? I mean, but do you for, think? But do you think it makes people? It's a sin and straight pull to pull one out. Well, okay? I'm just saying. But, but do you think it makes people a little <laughs> bit lazy as for learning to kick at a ball? That's one thing that I think that I'd heard. I don't know if it was Pretty Boy Floyd or whoever yes had said no. it. He had said, you know, just wondering. Do you think it makes people a little bit lazy on learning those diamonds? Learn everything. Mm, I've got okay. a video just out there case. on my okay. on my YouTube. Uh, I'm just gonna throw a little plug out there for my YouTube channel, but it, but it's called Worst Case Scenario Training, and I put the I ball that. in these impossible situations to where I've not only got to jump. I, I I actually use a use my cue to just jump the 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 cue ball into the rail and over yes. over a group of balls, and you have to learn everything. Mm -hmm. um, kicking, so you don't know what's gonna to, hit you. I, the way I learned how to kick is was through learning from Jimmy Reed mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy Reed Rest in peace. Uh, was, Oh, love him. Uh, that was that, that his, his kicking systems and his knowledge uh, were, were so impactful uh, mm -hmm. because he, he, he basically, basically said, you have to learn everything about this game. Yes. Uh, yes. There's, there's, there's always something to learn. Every time I go to the table, every time I watch a match, every time I see a new player that does something different, I try to learn something new. I get you. Um, you know, you have great shot makers out there like, uh, like, like Corey Duell, mm. who could probably you know, knock, a, knock a flea off a, off a gnat's ass <laughs> at 100 yards if they had to. And uh, not all of us are born with that type of accuracy. Uh, some mm -hmm. of us have to work like I like I've said a couple of times. I had to work twice as hard to be half as good. Yes, and uh, you know you 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 really have to go out there and learn absolutely everything about this game. If um, you know, like with nine ball, you know it, it's it's the, the the break is so important in nine ball, mm -hmm. especially in alternating rack. If you I mean, goodness, high, whenever I mean, have... it's all it's becoming more like tennis. It's becoming to the point to where you can't lose you can't lose your serve. You know, it's you getting like that with you those can. guys. Now, let me go on and, and ask you right quick, one more thing right quick, and that is, again, another controversial thing maybe, and that is uh, – I just want to say one more thing about the racks. Yeah, money. I wanna, I wanna, okay, yeah, sure. One more yeah, sure. thing about the racks. The reason I don't like them is because the balls slide off of them. I think, okay. I think it's kind of hokey. Mm. You know, okay. the balls aren't on the cloth and they slide across these little pieces of plastic or even some of them are made of felt, and I don't like them. They're not level. Mm. Mm. You okay, can roll right. on one of those too. Okay, I've we, seen we it. I've seen some it. feathers there. We'll probably get, you know, I don't know if any hate mail is going to come in, you know, right there. So it's just the way uh, I feel. It's hopefully, just the way uh, I feel. hopefully uh, any of uh, the magic rack uh, companies, if me and you are together at a tournament standing beside each other and they're plotting anything, I'm hoping I've got my bullet vest on at that time. But uh, let me ask another one that's going to make people a little bit mad uh, money and pool. I mean, uh, when I was. Um, yes. 
again, when I was about to graduate, that's when I feel like pool changed somewhere in the 90s when I was gone, because by the time I came back, yeah. it was just, whoa, um, there was some huge money that was being won, at least from what I was seeing, there was some big yeah. championships. What in the world happened with the uh, the money for pool players? Because to me personally, um, they say Shane, when I first got into this, they had said that Shane used to practice eight hours a day. And I know of a lot of, of pros that train eight hours a day um, or six to eight hours a day. That's the way we did with martial arts to get good. Why in the world yeah. – um, would these guys not be millionaires? I mean, it, I don't know that many people can do what Tyler is doing, what Sky is doing, what Justin is doing. I don't know that many people that can do what CJ has done. I don't know that many people yeah. that can do what Hillbilly has done. Um, I can keep naming people, and I don't know how many millionaire pool players there are. In fact, I'm scared to even say that I've heard people go, I can't even afford to be a pro because of the amount of money that I'm putting into the game compared to what I'm making. Now, what's, what, 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 from when it's you were there, life. you know. It's a tough life. I know it's like to eat stale potato chips for, for mm. breakfast in the morning. <laughs> and, uh, potato chips. You know, it's, it, it, it comes down to mistakes uh, that we have made uh, as a, uh, as a sport or a game, I want to get into that, mm. uh, whether okay. it's a sport okay. or a game, but, um, you know, we've made some, some very, very vital errors. Uh, today you, you can get and turn on ESPN and watch hours of cornhole and rock, paper, scissors. And um, people mm. ask me, uh, why is, why are they having sponsors and why are they having ax throwing? So there, my wife and I watched. Yeah, they just opened up throwing. a place here in Waco, uh, you know, doing that. Yeah, to throw axes. And mm -hmm. uh, why is there no money in pool? And why is this, that? And, you know, and, and um, it comes down to a, number one, it's a, a, you, you need three things to, to survive. Number one, you need money. Okay. And that comes in the form of what? Sponsorship. People have to believe in what our product is, they have to believe in the player's ability to draw people in okay, to watch so that they can sell their product, okay? We can't just have a pool tournament and just advertise pool tables, pool cues, pool balls, tips, and pool, you know, pool shirts or, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you might get the hardcore pool player, but you're not going to bring in the, the, the masses, mm -hmm. which is what you really, the, which is most potential big name sponsors, that's what they're looking for. And the magic formula is, number one, you have to have that money behind mm -hmm. behind the event mm -hmm. number one the second thing you need is you need organization okay organization which means that you know what we have um i i love when i read bca the governing body of pool um it's really not it's a trade organization mm. they govern nothing but who represents us on the world level to the WCBS, the um, and, and that whole little umbrella right there. Okay, all um, right. It's it's kind of backwards, and, huh. and our representation um, is part of that organization, and that organization includes snooker, and includes, includes billiards. So if we're unorganized as pool, you have all these regional tours out there, no pro tour on either side for the men or the women. Okay. And all these regional tours out there and everybody's just sitting there trying to grab what they, what they can get. It's not a bad thing. We need tournaments. We need stuff at the regional level, mm -hmm. but we have no organization at all. Hmm. I'm talking North America. Okay. I'm not talking around the world. Some okay. places in the world, they got their stuff together. Now mm -hmm. here in North America, we don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. So money organization. And then the most important thing is we need leadership. Yes, sir. We need leadership. We need the right people in the right positions to make the right choices and make the right decisions for the right reasons. Okay. All right. And pool has not had that for a very long time. Well, people you, bring up I, the IPT. I would love to see it go back on television. I would love <laughs> they, to see they bring it up get the bigger. IPT. I'd love to see the money get bigger. I'd love to see pool 
uh, one thing that John uh, Smith said uh, once he had said that if there was way more money in pool, then a parent could look at their child and say, hey, look, you know, I'm going to put you, I'm going to go get a table or I'm going to put you in this uh certification course or whatever so that one day you know because like they said in golf you could be 17th place and you're still making money you know you can oh, yeah. be 31st place and still be making money and i think your, for your, the amount your sponsorship, of sponsorship your sponsorship oh, is goodness. is worth more than your than, than what you're going to make at the tournament well that's something and, and right we now we do. don't have that Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we it's do. like being a starving artist mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and that's the reason that's the reason right there i mean we've been trying to you know there's a movement out there um, I've got friends that are out on the battlefield trying to get pool into the schools and uh, okay. trying to get pool into, into a curriculum format and, yes. and to teach it uh, at not only at the high school level, yep. Mark uh, but Wilson, the school at the level, college the level, college at the university level. level, Mark Wilson, I mean, had an incredible program and, um, you know, like what I said, a great ambassador for our game. What like I said, look, look, we've got to do more of these talks. I mean, uh, you know, you're somebody that I got to talk to every now and then and just uh, get me back on track. Sometimes at the same time, you turn me back on to what's going on in the pool industry at the time, maybe because I'm way yeah. over here in in Waco well, and I might get heavily for, back into martial arts and do something. I got to go. I, I, hey, man, what's going on in the real you, world? Hmm? I have I have not I have not played pool uh, in about two years. Mm. Um, I, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 2004. Okay. Um, you're my voice is going. Uh, he's, people probably say, why is that guy all over the screen? Uh, but so I don't shoot pool anymore because my hands are all over the place. Uh, but okay. I'm still involved. I'm involved as much as I can be at yes, this sir. point. Yes, um, sir. Do we have people that are out there that can bring our game to the next level? We have, uh, and I won't steal CJ's thunder because CJ uh, is a great leader uh, when it comes to pool. Uh, Mark Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy Jones, just mm -hmm. a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal person. Um, and, and we have to be able to learn from the mistakes of the past, just like anything else. Yes, uh, sir. Go out there and you lose a match, take inventory. You know, it's the same thing. Pool, pool needs to do that as a, as a game, as a sport, you know, collectively take inventory and say, okay, uh, we're getting a lot out of this and we're, <laughs> well, these habits over here are not, are, are not helping us win in the long okay. run. So well, do you we think that do you do could do me a big favor? Do you think you could do me a big favor? And, you know, I would love to get another uh, interview with you in the future. And I want to go into uh, something that you do not only for pool, but for other sports. And that's the mental game. Oh, I yeah. think that I would love to go and talk to you more about that. Um, because I think that even in martial arts, I mean, there are times where you've got 30 seconds and you're down by three points. Well, what you going to do? You know, if you run up and think you're just going to score those points, you're going to get kicked in the face. And now you're, now yeah. you're down six points. So what my point is, is that I would love to get with you on that. I do want to thank you for taking out some time to talk with me today. Oh, thank you. And thank I you. Think, oh, yeah. I think this is going to be a blast. I would love to do a lot more uh, interviews. I'd like to interview some of the people that we've mentioned. And also, um, I'm really, really, really encouraged today about some of the people that you mentioned that uh, some of us don't even know about. And uh, oh, we yeah. need to be reeducated on those guys because the only reason why we're here playing pool is because those guys were so great. Open the door, open, open the doors to history and let them in. All know? right, then. Uh, and, and that's, that's, that's what it's all about is understanding the true history of, of not only our game, but, but all sports. I, I and, agree. And I it's, agree. It's, it's just an, it's, it's an incredible world out there uh, that uh, once you're educated, once you understand uh, some guys, their main battle is just to get to the battle, mm. you know, and uh, if, there's any testimony that Cicero Murphy had. I mean, half of his battle was just to get in the tournament. In the tournament, and, yes, uh, yes. And we're going to get on that too. Myself, we're myself, gonna get on that I, too. I would never have to go through that. You mm -hmm. know, just be just because of my birth. You know, I yeah, understand. Look, gonna we're going to get on that one day. We're going to do, uh, even if it's a uh, 
uh, another day I want to get an I want to get a day that we talk just about his story and get some pictures and some things that we can flash up maybe, on there you know, maybe I, you could get me and Cicero Murphy jr on at the same time hey man that would be beautiful let's go hey look you do your connections My brother. I'll do mine and let's make something happen I want to tell you this this is SPM Radio. I mean, we've this great podcast that we're going to be doing. Shout out to my good friend, uh, Mr. Garrett Troop. He is putting something great together. There are more things that are going to happen that's going to make not just the radio, the video, and just so many big things that we plan on uh, bringing. Because what we're trying to do is not only make the pool community bigger, we're trying to educate, we're trying to uh, give an internet hug to all the people that were there before us. And that's what we plan on doing. So I want to thank you again yeah. for taking up the time to talk to me today. Thank you. All right, then. You take care. Not a problem, man. Anytime, anything you need, you know you can call on me, brother. You got so. it, man. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. All right, Cobra. Bye-bye. <laughs>